All right, hey folks. So this is my third time trying to record this, but here is the Milky Tracker tutorial for use in Game Boy Studio even faster than before. So uh, we've got Milky Tracker, we've got Game Boy Studio, and first thing that we're gonna do is create a new project. I have my new project right here in Game Boy Studio. Um, if you just look at it real quick, um, it, it doesn't really matter. Just as long as you have a new project, it should be good. If you click up here in Open Project Folder, we've got uh, this folder here, which belongs to our project. We've got our GBS project file and our assets folder. So we're going to go into the music part of the assets folder. And inside every new project, sample project or blank project, will be the template.mod file that we want. This is what we use to get accurate instruments for creating music and sound effects. So I just dragged that into Milky Tracker just now, uh, and that's perfectly fine. Our first step is to hit Save As, and in Save As, I'm going to pick somewhere to save it, and uh, let's create, um, ignore this, create template.gb.xm. Uh, you can call it whatever you want as long as you can remember it. Uh, and second of all is that I'm going to hit Save As again because I want to create something new from the template. So let's create our first sound effect and also save that as an XM file. And we are going to, lastly, hit Zep at the top left and then hit Song. Now we have all of our instruments for the Game Boy, but we have no song data so we can compose and create whatever we want. Um, Now, if you're playing some of these notes just on your keyboard and you're noticing that they're playing through the stereo speakers and it's kind of a lot, uh, especially for headphones users, uh, you can go to Options and in the Panning section, Advanced, uh, I'm just checking E8X Panning because that's the panning effect that we use when we're composing for GBT Player, but also there's a default panning window uh, when you install a new version of Milky Tracker, most likely it's set to this, the Amiga version, which is super panned. Uh, you can click on Mono down here at the predefined uh, presets and hit OK, and that should fix pretty much everything to do with it. Um, so I have no issues with stereo, stereo audio, it's all coming out mono, it's all good. So instead of creating a song, uh, we're creating a sound effect. Uh, sound effects are a lot shorter, they're a lot easier to create from start to finish, and in my opinion, they're the best way to learn the tools before you get kind of lost in the music theory sauce or trying to create anything interesting that's thematic for your game. Uh, sound effects are also pretty important and we don't have enough of them. So uh, this is my way of encouraging people to start making more of them. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, noise channel for this because the noise channel has the most uh, use for sound effects. Uh, drums are kind of difficult, so we're just starting with sound effects. Uh, so let's create an earthquake sound. To get that, uh, I'm going to actually go to the documentation of Game Boy Studio, and I have my own personal little documentation that I've made a pull request with. Uh, and this feature is numbered uh, instruments for both OpenMPT and uh, Milky Tracker. And that's because OpenMPT uses base 10 numbers for referring to instruments, while Milky Tracker uses hexadecimal numbers. So I'm going to go down to the noise section and I'm gonna look down here. Oh, okay, I've got earthquake, spaceship, ocean, just different sounds. They get some explanations next to them. Let's use uh, instrument 18 to start our earthquake sound. So I'm gonna hit a note go to instrument 14. Um, I'm using shift and up and down to do this, by the way. Uh, it's pretty useful, in my opinion. Uh, let's see what this sounds like. All right, that, oh, hold on a second. Right, 18, okay. Okay, that's much more like an earthquake starter, but uh, it doesn't sound perfect. And that's because when we're using Milky Tracker, uh, it doesn't matter what pitch you use for the noise channel, but it will only display the pitch of C4 in Milky Tracker, and that's because Milky Tracker uses zero indexing while OpenMPT does not, and Game Boy Tracker was written for MPT, so just bear with me. It's C4. C4 is the correct pitch that you're going to hear for noise instruments. Let's see what that sounds like now. All right, uh, let's try to progress the sound a little bit. Maybe after eight steps, let's do another sound, but let's move up an instrument. 
something important to remember is that with the pseudo random noise, especially, uh, these are samples of uh, just random noise that have been repeated faster and faster. So 18 is the slowest version of this waveform. 19 and 1a are faster versions, and same with uh, 1b. Uh, yeah. But um, it might be kind of hard to hear in the tracker, but uh, these are only approximations of what is actually happening in the Game Boy hardware. So let's keep that going and go maybe over to 20. Oh, sorry. Uh, we've got to use 1A because we're using Melky Tracker. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So that kind of sounded coherent because we're using from the same set of sounds. Um, Let's add some volume to this. So let's maybe start it off kind of quiet. Let's go louder and then hit the maximum volume at the sort of focal point of our sound effect. All right, maybe about here we can start to drop off the volume a bit. Uh, let's go down to uh, 3, 8, 30, 28, 20, 18, 10, 8, 0. All right, that was pretty cool. Um, it was kind of slow. Uh, there's two ways we can do this. I'm hitting um, insert, by the way, while I'm in edit mode to do this, and backspace. Um, I'm going to set the F speed, and I'm going to set it to, let's say, 5. All right, that was nice, but we could get some more dynamic uh, timing happening. So if we maybe set this to F6 and then go down here to where it starts to fade out, we can set this back to uh, F5. All right, that's sort of more of what I wanted. One last thing I'm gonna add in is a C04. That's to smooth out the transition from this eight to this zero. We've only got steps of four in our hexadecimal uh, lineup of zero to 40 hexadecimal when we're doing volume for channels one, two, and four. So that's why I'm doing these kind of obscure numbers. Uh, just remember that eight is half of 16. 10 in base 16 represents 16. So eight represents like 50% of uh, one whole 16. And then four is another smaller step. And unfortunately, uh, these... O2 and like O1 commands are not read by Game Boy Tracker, so we're just going to ignore that and go straight to zero. All right, uh, and something else important to note is that I'm ending with C0, so if for some reason I wanted my sound effect to loop, uh, because I'm ending with silence, um, there's no chance of a note accidentally overlapping. If I, for some reason, did this instead, um, let's let's do this on another channel. Just pretend that this is important to the sound effect. Maybe some kind of like wine kind of sound. Yeah, like that. Uh, let's just say I do this. So notice how it went over, and that's because I didn't mute it at the very end. Um, it depends what you want, but most people will probably want to add a little uh, noise canceling part here for any active channels um, if they are going to be looping. But in this case, I'm not looping it, so it's totally fine. We've got our sound effects, and uh, frankly, it sounds pretty good. Uh, let's see what this sounds like in game. So we're gonna go to save as again, and for sound effect.mod, uh, so now I'm going to go back over to my assets folder for Game Boy Studio. Um, and let me just give me a second to go back over to where I keep all of my tracker stuff. Uh, first sound effect.mod, drag that in. Um, and let's just double check that Game Boy Studio is actually like checking. Uh, our music resource, and in this case, it's not. Uh, this is just a feature of the build that I have right now for some reason. Uh, this will probably be fixed in the future, but if this happens, just close your project, open up Game Boy Studio again, uh, open up your project again, and 
You should have it if you go back to view your music. Yes, first sound effect. All right, cool. So um, that's great, but the best way to find out how our sounds are playing to people who are playing our games is actually to build the game and test the sound in game. So I've got a scene start script. I'm just going to show you what that looks like from the very beginning of the process is I have a scene, I have the scene start script. I'm just going to make sure that we've got some time to prepare for the music. You don't need this wait at the beginning if you don't want it. I'm going to uncheck loop and make sure I've got first sound effects selected and I'm going to save and hit build. So this is going to test our sound in game just to make sure there's no errors. Yeah, and quite frankly, that sounds way better than what we were hearing in the tracker. And that's what I love is that um, converting to mod and then putting it in your game always sounds way more satisfying than just sort of trying to build up to it in the process. So yeah, that's basically how you create these sound effects for um, GBT Player and Game Boy Studio. Uh, there's so much more that you can learn about, like the limitations of the channels, how to compose melodies, music theory, uh, creating new patterns, but um, I'll leave that for other videos to take care of because they're more Milky Tracker tutorials. Maybe they're open MPT tutorials if you're using a different program. Uh, and also the docs are super useful now. And if all else fails, you can always ask our Discord group or maybe the subreddit. I'll put links to both of those in the description of this tutorial. And yeah, I really hope to see a lot of really cool sound effects and songs created by you guys. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck game making.